Hi, hey, hello class. Um, today we are going to take our notes over Unit 1, Accentuate the Negative, um, Section 2.1, which is adding rational numbers. Okay, so so far we've been doing adding and subtracting with um, just regular integers, which are our whole numbers, and using our number line um, and our balloon analogy to help us with that. Okay, now we're going to think about how do I use negative numbers with that are fractions and that are decimals. How do I add those up? Because it wouldn't be as easy to use our number line or our um, balloon analogy for this. Okay, so what we do kind of need to know is what are the rules? How does it work when we're adding rational numbers? Okay, so there's two possible things that can happen. You can either add two numbers that have the same sign. So let's put a big bubble around same sign. Same sign would mean both positive or both negative. Okay, or your two numbers could have different signs. Okay, put a bubble around that too. So different signs would be uh, one's positive and one's negative. All right, so how does that work? Well, when they're the same sign, so when they're both positive or both negative, we are going to add the numbers, and it says add the absolute values. That means just add the two numbers themselves, ignore the sign and add them, and then we're going to keep the sign. So if they're both positive, it would stay positive. If they're both negative, it would be negative. All right, so three plus 10, those are the same sign, so I add them. Three plus 10 is 13, keep the sign. The sign is positive, so it's positive. Okay, right here, these two are both negative. So I'm going to add them. Three plus 10, again, is 13, but this time the common sign would be that they're both negative. All right, so that's when they're the same sign. When they are different signs, you actually subtract them. And that's because positives and negatives are opposites. They cancel each other out. So we don't add a positive and negative together, we subtract them from one another. Okay, so we're gonna subtract the absolute values. So again, that means just look at the numbers without the signs, subtract them, and then you're gonna give it the sign of whichever uh, number has a greater absolute value. So whichever number is larger without the sign. All right, so four plus negative seven. Again, they're different signs, so I'm going to subtract them. So subtract the larger number, seven is larger than four. So seven take away four is three. Okay, and then which number is larger? Well, seven is larger and it's negative. So this one would be negative three. All right, and then over here, same two numbers, but this time um, the four is negative. So they're different, so I subtract them. Seven take away four is three. This time the positive is larger, so it would be a positive three. All right, so those are the rules. So now let's apply them to uh, some various problems here. All right, the first one is just integers, tw negative 12 plus 19. First thing I wanna ask myself, are they the same or are they different? Well, they are different, one's negative and one's positive. So since they're different, I'm going to subtract them. 19 take away 12 would make seven. And then the larger number is positive. So it would be a positive seven since 19 is larger than 12. All right, now let's look at fractions. So we have to think about all of our rules for what do we need to do for adding fractions. Well, to add fractions, we have to have a common denominator first before we even attempt deciding if they're the same or different and what to do. So two and five, not the same denominator. So our common denominator of two and five, well, if I multiply those together, they're both out of 10. So what I can do is I can go ahead and write both fractions out of 10 here. I've got a plus in the middle. And here's the thing, they were both negative numbers, even when I make a common denominator, they're still both gonna be negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert those negatives so I don't forget those, because um, making common denominator does not change the, the sign of the number. All right, so to then to go from two to 10, I'm multiplying by five, right? Two times five is 10. So I take one times five, which would make five there. And again, it would be a negative five since it just keeps the sign. All right, and then to go from five to 10, that's doubling it, right? Five times two is 10. So negative three times two would make negative six. All right, so I've got my common denominator now. So now I can add them. So when I add them, it's gonna keep that denominator. And I look, okay, are they the same or are they different? Well, they're both negative, so that's the same sign. So I'm gonna add them. Five plus six is 11, and I keep that common sign, which is negative 11. All right, so negative 11 over 10 would be the answer. Um, if we write it improper, we can also write it as a mixed number. So 10 goes into 11 one time with one left over. And then don't forget your negative. Your negative is always in the front of the number. So if there's a whole number, it would be in front of the whole number. Oops, I just noticed I didn't box this one. All right, so that's the answer to those.
All right, next one, some decimals. All right, with decimals, we just have to use our rules here. So we have to ask ourselves, are these the same or different? Well, one's positive, one's negative. Those would be different signs. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna subtract the numbers. Now, when you're subtracting numbers, you do big number minus small. So if I ignore my negative, 3.5 is bigger than 2.3. So I wanna line them up. Maybe we'll line them up over here on the side and do 3.5 minus 2.3. Okay, so the larger number on top when we're subtracting. And then we just subtract. Five minus three is two. Three minus two is one. And then keep that decimal in place. So my answer would be 1.2. And then don't forget to check, should it be positive or negative? Well, when I look at these, the 3.5 was larger, it's negative. So my answer would be a negative 1.2. Remember, it always gets the sign of whichever number is larger. All right, this next one. Okay, this definitely looks like a longer one because it's got three numbers. Okay, we have some options here. We know when we add that we have to have a common denominator. Okay, and these two already do. So what I could do is I could add these two numbers together first. Um, we also notice that um, we have some mixed numbers and then one that's not a mixed number. So what's helpful, it's not easy to add when you have some mixed numbers and some that aren't. It's best to make them all, if they're mixed, make them improper. Makes it easier when you're adding multiple numbers together. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make these improper. Okay, so let's do five times three, which is 15, plus two, so that would be 17 over five. Double so check, yep. Okay, and then this one's already three-fourths, it's not a mixed number. And then this one, five times two, is 10 plus one would make 11 fifths, and that's a negative. Okay, it'd be a lot easier to calculate with them all being in the same format. Now again, because these already have the same denominator, I'm gonna go ahead and add those together first. So they uh, 17 plus negative 11. Well, those are different signs, so I'm gonna subtract them. 17 take away 11 would leave me with six, and then the positive 17 is larger, so it's six, fifths, positive six fifths. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring down that three fourths. Okay, so now we don't have a common denominator, so we need to make one. So five and four both go into 20. So I'm gonna write two fractions out of 20. Five goes into 20 four times. So if I take this times four, that would be 24. Okay, and then four goes into 20 um, five times, so this times five would be 15. All right, and then I am able to add those up. So 24 plus 15, let's see, that would make 39 out of 20. All right, and let's see, 39 is not going to reduce, so that would be the improper fraction. I can also mix it up and say 20 goes into 39 one time with 19 left over. All right, so that would be the mixed number. That would be the improper fraction for that one. All right, so did it take longer? Yes, it did. But if you look for things like, oh, these have a common denominator and we're adding multiple numbers, that's helpful to, to sim do that part first so you don't have to make common denominators with all of them. All right, now this last one also has three numbers, but you might notice something. This number, negative 2.1, positive 2.1, those are opposites. You know what happens when we add opposites? Negative 2.1 plus positive 2.1. If I add those together, it equals zero. So that's helpful because if those make zero, then my answer is just what's left over. It's 3.8. So look for things like that. Anytime you're adding more than two numbers together, look to see is there an easy pair to add up first and then add those and then add the third number or whatever else um, afterwards. All right, we are almost done. Two more questions here. These are both evaluating expressions, which just means figuring out what this expression is if I plug those numbers in. So I'm gonna plug that in where X is, plug that in for Y. So X is negative one third plus Y is five thirds. Okay, well luckily we already have a common denominator, so we're adding. We just have to look, are they the same or different? Well, this one's negative, this one's positive, so those are different signs. So I'm going to subtract them. Five take away one would make four, 
keep that denominator of 3, and we are done. 4 over 3. So that's the improper fraction, and we can also mix it up. 3 goes into 4 one time with 1 left over. So 1 and 1 third would be acceptable as well. All right, last question. A plus B, if A is this and B is that. So let's plug those numbers in. A is negative 4.1 plus B is negative 2.7. So put some parentheses around that so we can see that negative. All right, so we're adding decimals. We look at them and we do notice that those are both negative, so they're the same sign, so we are going to add them together. So I'm gonna line up my decimals. 4.1 plus 2.7. Okay, and then add them up. 1 plus 7 is 8, 4 plus 2 is 6, and bring that decimal down. So my answer then is going to be 6.8, and then I check my sign. Remember when we add them, when they're the same sign, we want to keep the sign. So they were both negative, so we keep it negative. <clears throat> All right, so when you're adding negative numbers, whether they're fractions, decimals, whole numbers, just remember these two things. Same sign, we add and keep the sign. Different signs, different signs cancel out. We subtract and give the sign of whichever one is larger. All right, now you guys can do your 2.1 practice.